living in the modern world, we are constantly barraged. We are bombarded by a clutter of ultimately meaningless stimulus. Yeah. And that's day in and day out. And our ancestors didn't have to deal with that. The human yeah. brain, literally, is, is, is not set for that. Um, when you do physical exercise, you are training your physical muscles so that you can move. Yep. When you do spiritual es exercise, you are training your, your internal attitudinal muscles so that you can remain motionless and non-reactive. A problem that people have today, uh, people have no impulse control. You know, the whole world has spilkas, as we yeah. would say, right? Yes. Is I, and so what's happening is like, well, the nervous system is like a crystal vase too much water is coming in and everybody's face is shattered, everybody's mm. nervous system is shattered. And that's what meditation does. And that's why the ego is always about, you know, sometimes you go into a really nice restaurant, right? And it's so loud, you can't even hear the other yeah, person. Sure. And that's time. what's called a cool restaurant. Yeah. It's one in which I can, what? What did you say? <laughs> so a, a lot of the spiritual reclamation of the soul has to do with a cultivation of a quiet mind, a quiet yeah. environment. There, there is in both Judaism and in, in, in Christianity an expression, the small, still voice for God. The ego speaks first. The ego speaks loudest. Yep. And meditation gives us the capacity to hear the small, still voice that will not impose itself on you but is there, and through meditation, and through prayer, and through serious spiritual practice, we become finely tuned intuitional instruments. Because we can hear. It's a, a radio link that everybody has. But in the world today, there's so much static, you can't hear it. And that's why the cultivation of a quiet mind is everything, as you obviously know. And you mentioned, uh, as part of your morning ritual, uh, <clears throat> even though you, know, you do read the news, you, you always make sure to have time to meditate every morning so you have a chance to to have that 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 stillness and well if you look at it we wake up in the morning you take a shower you take a bath you don't want to take yesterday's dirt into the day yep. but if you don't meditate and you don't pray then you're taking yesterday's stress yep. and in today's world you're taking the stress mm. of everybody in in Greece and Turkey and Syria and the, the stress of everybody in Iraq and Afghanistan so and Pakistan and every place else so this idea of of allowing ourselves to receive the light, not only to give us peace, but there's something bigger going on. It's so that then when you are going back into the darkness of the world, you yourself can be a transformer. You can bring your peace with you. So you don't just receive the miracle, you go out to work miracles. Sure. Miracles being that shift in your own perception from being at the effect of the fear of the world yeah. to being at the cause through a love that passes. Hey, I mean, you mentioned in the book that if you're constantly stressed, you're not really alive. And you're certainly not of help to others. Definitely not. And that's really the name of the game today, the of help to others part. I agree. I agree. I agree completely. Um, <clears throat> let's see, some some other really cool things. Ah, well, this was goes back to what we were talking about, uh, about meditating in, in the morning. You, mm -hmm. you mentioned here uh, that, uh, you know, we shouldn't really turn down a chance to meet with God and that that's what meditation is. I tell people all the time that, you know, if you go to the doctor and the doctor just comes in and leaves the room too fast, you're sitting here thinking, well, he or she didn't really hear, I need to tell them about my symptoms. They didn't really hear the whole story. They came in and rushed in and out too fast. That's how we are with God. I always have this amusing image in my mind of God sitting at a desk going like this. <laughs> you know, it's like we, you, you can have a meeting. I remember there was a song on uh, the album Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder, and he said, God is the only free psychiatrist known throughout right. the world to every boy quote. and girl. We, how can you turn down? It's like, if you think about it, you can have on any given day a free meeting with God for however long you want. And we're like, no, I'm too busy. I, I gotta go. I gotta <laughs> pick up the game. <laughs> That's really what we're talking about here. That's true. So yeah, people, <laughs> should, people should take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. Well, I mean, or not. It's up to them. It's up to them. Um, but actually, you know, because you mentioned like, we, we shouldn't feel like, you know, we should be able to ask whatever we want and feel that it's okay to, to pray and never think it's too, too selfish, right? You mentioned we shouldn't feel that it's too selfish to pray, but can't it be sometimes selfish? Well... Obviously some things can be, right? 
I think that what we want to move away from is seeing God as your errand boy. Okay. You know, getting what you want. You know, people talk today as though there's something spiritual about just figure out what you want and go for it. Hitler figured out what he wanted and went for it. Yeah. ISIL figured out what they wanted and they're going for it. That's not the high spiritual mountaintop to have a vision of what you want and go for it. Yeah. That's number one. The second has to do with the difference between what the Course in Miracles calls magic and miracles. Magic is what a lot of people are doing these days. Basically, you use universal principle as your errand boy. You have a to-do list and mm -hmm. you give it to the universe. I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this. And if I concentrate on it and visualize it and all that, I can make it happen, which you probably can. Sure. Once again, but let's not pretend that's the high spiritual mountaintop. The high spiritual mountaintop is not where you ask the universe for what you want. The high spiritual mountaintop is where you place yourself in service to the universe. Not what can I get, but what can so, I get. So how do you do that? Because well, it's easy, on it's one easy to, one, to one do second. the other side. I think it's almost the opposite, but hold on. Great. The idea, I was with some friends the other day. Marianne, what do you want? I said, I can't think of anything I want right now. I got so much pushback. People were actually <laughs> uncomfortable with that. Well, there must be something that you want. Actually, there's nothing I want right now. I mean, I'm so thrilled with what is right. and what I have. And Being I said, and then, but the pushback, the, the pushback. Now, the ego mind, it's the ego, the fear-based ego, which has this core belief that you don't have enough. Right. And so your, your requests for what you want are based on a core belief that you lack. So then no matter what you get, your core belief is still that you lack, so you will just subconsciously recreate more lack. So it's not that you are selfish, because in the spiritual world, it's a win-win. But it is the realization that on a spiritual plane, I only get to keep what I give away. So if you live, and this is where lines like, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added unto you. Kingdom of heaven is an awareness with oneness, of our oneness. So from a metaphysical perspective, if I seek to be fully in the present, to be there as an instrument of excellence and love, everything that could possibly contribute to my happiness and ease and do in doing so is already in the on the way. Yeah. It's already in the way on the way. And it's just pick it up because it's right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, it's a I different agree. mindset. But then how do you put yourself in service? Well, I'm a Course in Miracles student. The Course is, doesn't claim any monopoly on truth. There's one truth with a capital T spoken in many different ways. The Course, one of the things that's very powerful for those of us who do feel moved to read it, the Course, is that the second book is a workbook. It's the crux of the Course, is that actual attitudinal psychological mind training in releasing one thought system based on fear and replacing it with a thought system based on love. So, for instance, um, in The Course in Miracles, there's a prayer. It says, every day ask, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? And so it's a radical, it's a path of forgiveness more than anything else, a radical path of forgiveness. But it says, no decisions are to be made for ourselves. We are to ask. You and I are a perfect example. Um, I'm busy this week in London. And I hadn't gotten back to you, and I hadn't gotten back to you, but something in me said, show up for that. Now, notice even then today, because I was still in that, like, I, I don't have time for this mode, right? Yeah. But my, my, direct, my internal guidance was to, and then once I was reminded, you know, we're not perfect masters, but you just keep going and you, with it, and you seek to live that way. So when you, I, I put today you know, on Facebook, my post was, every day, dedicate your life to God. You don't necessarily say this, but think it. I said, it will put you in Shakti receptor mode all mm. day. Because when you say, God yep. use me today, it aligns you with the vertical and gives you power in the horizontal. It is, a, is it an instruction to your subconscious mind. All of the input which would foster my strength and my attracting all things positive, that's what I want to notice. May everything else, may that not be where my mind goes. You know, the, in the Jewish Star of David and in the Christian cross, you have visual symbols of the intersection Absolutely. between the vertical and the horizontal. And we're all the ego mind grasping for the horizontal. <sighs> I want the house, I want the car, I want the money, I want the sex. When you just make it, the, 
make your concentration the vertical in the Course in Miracles it says you are far too tolerant of mind wandering because we don't have trained attitudinal muscles mm -hmm. it says you, you, you achieve so little because you have undisciplined minds and discipline and disciple come from that same word yep. in root so you, you make that your concentration Mentioned in the book here as well yeah. and anything that, that can contribute to your happiness which your ego mind can't possibly know what that would be yeah, absolutely. So you being receptive, that's where it starts. And you can't do that when you're stressed, obviously. And that that alignment and that meditation. The thing I love about the Course in Miracles is that it is a particular sentence every day. Yeah. It's like a mantra. A lot of people you know, it's interesting because all meditation is relaxation. But not all relaxation is meditation. So there are a lot of people today who say they meditate, but when you actually ask their technique, it's more relaxation. Which is lovely, relax, but meditation really changes the brainwave patterns. When you actually have a that's mantra a very, practice very technique. Good point. Yeah. Very, very good point. Uh, and you do uh, transcendental meditation as I well. I do TM and A Course in Miracles. So. But I'm more everyday disciplined with the Course. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I really like what you said also about how the mystic views any problem as a chance to use his or her magic wands. Could you uh, expand on that a bit? Well, look in the Old Testament, look at the staff of Moses. It's the same archetype, um, and and God said, you know, throw it down and turn it into a snake, which scared Moses. Yeah. That's the power of the mind when it is out of your control. He said, pick it up, take control over it, and it turned into his staff. And it's fascinating the metaphysics of the of the story of Exodus because when he held the staff up, hello, held his mind up, the Israelites won. And then there's that one scene in the in the Exodus where I can't remember which of the two men had to actually. He was so tired, and they held up his arms. Do yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know yeah, if it was yeah. Aaron or somebody else. He was yeah. just too tired. He held it up because when he held the staff down, the Israelites were defeated. That's the power of the mind, wow. and that's the same archetype as Merlin's wand, or the, or the in the fairy tales, which are very metaphysical. The the fairy godmother. She she didn't sure. when the fairy godmother was with Cinderella, and Cinderella needed a dress for the for the ball, the fairy godmother didn't call Selfridges. No. Or no. Saks Fifth Avenue. Uh, yeah, or Saks Fifth Avenue. She takes the wand and it you use means what you she, got. she puts light around the rags and the rags turned into, which means you take the circumstances. God doesn't transform your life by changing your circumstances. He transforms your life by changing the, your view of the circumstances that you are already in. And then from there, yeah. either those circumstances are taken to a higher place or if they are to be replaced and changed they will be but if you haven't transformed your view then even if you change your circumstances you'll recreate the same situation so the idea of, of the wand is the idea of focused mental a focused mental a thought a focused thought in a spiritual direction yeah. love atonement compassion forgiveness and meanwhile the <clears throat> also the idea that the problem is, is an opportunity is also uh, an important uh, well every insight. every prob every situation in life is a platform for a miracle and every once you really get that every situation bar none is the individualized curriculum my being here with you right now this is it how am i doing so what's the lesson well i'm trying my best to show up I'm trying my best to be present i'm trying my best to be positive this moment, this is it. You know, I, I was with somebody one day and I remember saying, Oh my God, I totally get where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Do you want me to tell you? And she said, What? What? I said, You're supposed to be here. <laughs> you're supposed to be with me. How do I know? Because you are. Absolutely. God's not somewhere else at some other time. No, it's about being here. Actually, we've got a sentence here Happiness is not what happens when everything goes the way you think it should go, happiness is what happens when you decide to be happy. A Course in Miracles says happiness is a decision we must make. It's interesting in the fairy tales, going back to the metaphysics of the fairy tales, when it says, and they lived happily ever after. That's not a bad message. That's a good message. They learned to think. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, until we're total enlightened masters, even a happy life can have sad days. Sure. It's still a happy life. And you can, if you develop the attitudinal muscles, we tend to go through emotional and psychological crisis the same way we go through everything else in life. So if you are a positive person, it's a mental musculature that serves you well during those times in the valley. 
Well, yeah. that's that's where you know, spiritual intelligence really yeah. comes into play, that's right? Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Very powerful tool uh, toolkit to have. Um, <coughs> also, you, you talk uh, about about judgment, how it can stop the flow of goodness, uh, and how we have to be careful. Uh, you know, not to. Uh, you mentioned here. No one else's good fortunes diminish our own, except when we denigrate it. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that <clears throat> miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. And that every moment we make a choice, we make it consciously or unconsciously. Is my heart opened? Because if my heart is opened, the miraculous flow, the natural intelligence of the universe is expressing itself. If I withhold love through judgment, through attack, through blame, criticism through negativity, I literally block the love. I literally deflect the miracle that would otherwise occur. In A Course in Miracles it says you are like people in a very bright room putting your fingers in front of your eyes complaining that it's dark in here. So the idea is that miracles occur naturally but when I in any way fail to use my mind to approve, to be charitable, to be compassionate then I block it. Now, once you realize the concept of oneness, so on a physical level, you're over there and I'm over here, but the three-dimensional world, according to Buddha, according to the Course in Miracles, according to Einstein and others, is itself an illusion of consciousness. Sure. So on the level of ultimate reality, beyond the veil of this mortal world, there's no place where you stop and I start. So if I'm having a judgmental thought about you, in The Course in Miracles it says, imagine that a, I'm, a sword is dropping on your head, but actually it's dropping it's on you. mine. Yeah. So any judgment of you is a denial, if, because if I judge you, it is my way of saying you don't deserve blah, 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 which is my message to my own subconscious that that is what I believe about myself, and therefore I will not let myself have those things. So my generosity towards you is an act of self-interest. That's... Uh... That's what Nietzsche would say, right? Yeah, he, he would say that, actually. <laughs> he said also, uh, I quoted him in this book, he said um, something about how life is suffering and that to survive the suffering is to find meaning in it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> actually, this is interesting. Um, speaking of, of that and judging someone else, uh, I had a, a, there was a part here in your book that uh, you talked about uh, what are you supposed to do? You say, should you forgive all the people that are trying to destroy the planet and you know, and how do you do that? And like, you know, and how you can be angry? And then it's like, well, you're 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 upset at the politicians you mentioned, and you and, and you'd like things to be different. But then you even actually, more so than when I wrote that book. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> but then, but then you actually you decide to feel that sadness, and then and try and find love for those people, and and you you turn it around to the point where actually at the end you basically you say, wow, like you know. Uh, uh, I'm busted because, like, I'm also, you know, flawed to judge them, and and it almost felt a little bit like, uh, like Byron Katie's work, like that little segment there. Um, yeah, what what do you think? I mean, I don't know. What do you think of of the work? Uh, oh, I think she's that? a wonderful woman. This is the thing. Too many people then, for my taste, then take that to mean stay away from politics and stay away from activism because I don't want to judge them. Yep. And that, that's, to me, a real spiritual shadow yeah. right, for a lot of people in our community. The issue is, as, as Martin Luther King said, you have no morally persuasive power with people who can feel your underlying contempt. So if I judge you, I'm not going to be able to try to persuade you of a moral argument. Right. So if I'm angry in my politics, I will only get applause from those who already agree with me. Yep. So w where did I, where did I, really serve the cause? Well, so, so this is this is very interesting because you you ran. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, for was it governor? No, I ran for Congress. Congress it was Congress. That's right. I think right. we exactly. had that part down. I think that. And you, you, you I think you took like fourth or something. I took fourth, but it was out of sixteen people. So which you is know. very respectable. Yeah, well, I didn't I didn't run a good quote unquote campaign. Um, 
but I, I didn't, I'd never run a camp political campaign before or been part of a political campaign before and vastly underestimated how much that would impact my ability to do an effective job no matter how much money I raise. So I fell down terribly on that score. But in terms of the message, in terms of the presentation of the message, in terms of the issues we were talking about, which are basically echoed by sure. Bernie Sanders' campaign today, yep. that's kind yep. of where we were, um, I think it was uh, quite positive. And 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 I and I'm satisfied with what it was. So you're proud. You're happy. Yeah, I am very proud on on the, on that area. Yes, I'm I'm clear where I got it wrong and where I got it right. Hey, but it's the okay. the issue yeah, here. Yeah, but it, but it, it still had to run that course basically. Well, everything in life apparently did. Right? Yeah. Because we could have yeah. would have done better if we had known. But my point about politics here is, there's a difference between telling truth to power and calling systems to account. Yep. And personally demonizing individuals. Right. That's where the spiritual issue is. You know, some people talk about being love, 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 and therefore don't take part in a passionate debate. You know, I, I, I myself, because I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, have talked about Hillary. People say, well, you're being so negative about Hillary. No, I'm not. I don't, I don't agree with her politics. Right. I can respect her as a woman. It's okay to disagree. It, absolutely. And I, I think that there's really, uh, we need to stop being so pink and gauzy in the spiritual community. Healthy debates, like in, a, in an intimate relationship, you have to be able to fight. Absolutely. You know, you have to be Otherwise, able to... you're in denial. Yeah, yeah. And so I think not, that that's true in politics engaging. also. And it's also one of those, one more area where the spiritual community, higher consciousness community, we should be the biggest grown-ups. We should not allow ourselves to be so Often infantilized. it's so awful. And we're, we're, we are uh -huh. sidelined for good reason, because we, uh -huh. we're not carrying the gravitas that we could. I haven't seen this, but I heard Someone asked Sanders what, uh, what, if he was religious or spiritual, and he said something about how he just wanted everybody to basically love one another. Do you, it, was a, it, was a, it was a beautiful response rather than actually taking you know, any particular you know, religious path. Uh, Although many of us would see his spiritual philosophical outlook, as he has said, as deeply rooted in his Judaism. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. It's good for the world to see that, I think. I agree. I agree. And you mentioned tikkun olam also mm -hmm. in the book, which is mm -hmm. a, a very important Jewish concept of trying to make the, the world a better Repair place. That's that, it's our responsibility. Right, and that's where I think Bernie Sanders is coming from. Yeah. He's actually, he's got, I mean, to, this is uh, early April that we're having this interview, and he's got, uh, he's making a bit of a comeback. A lot remains to be seen what will happen, obviously, with the presidential race, but anything is still possible. Uh, but, yes, but regardless, he's already made a huge impact, whatever happens. Well, it's all mainstream media propaganda that, I mean, what he has done is extraordinary already. I, I agree completely. Um, you mentioned here, the more we pray, meditate, and take our spiritual practice seriously, the better listeners we become to the small, still voice of God, which, which we hit upon before. So, in order... In order to be more receptive to the world, if that's why it's so important to meditate or pray and to, and to be able to listen, and that's how we become of service, right? That's, that's well, the idea? We all have a choice. You can play life deep or you can play life shallow. Okay. And if you play life shallow, you meet the world on a level of personality. And you are also heir, the Course in Miracles says, you are heir to the laws that rule the, the, the level that you identify with. So if I only identify with the external world, I identify with the world of scarcity. And so I'm always trying to get, because I think there are only so many pieces of the pie. Yep. The more I ground myself in deep spiritual practice, that's more than share graphic spirituality. That deep, the deep practice of meditation and prayerfulness, whether... So seriousness really means something here. Yeah, as a student of the Course in Miracles, I mean, I see so much light, you know, spirituality mm -hmm. light these days. And then there are the serious where you actually spend time in meditation, you actually spend time in prayer, you actually go through every day, okay, as the Course in Miracles says, only what you are not giving can be lacking in any situation. Where you actually go through, okay, what, what was my part in this, what was my part? The Course in Miracles says, <clears throat> you pay a very high price for not taking 100% responsibility for your own experience. The price is that you can then not change it. Real spiritual work is, okay, what was my part in this disaster? Real spiritual work is, where, who am I not forgiving? Real spiritual work is, where am I obsessed with the past or the future? The real spiritual work is, where am I not recognizing the spiritual principle that is involved here? You know, the nitty gritty, gritty dirt under the fingernails. You know, the ego mind wants to monitor other people's processes. 
but, it, but we have a full-time job monitoring our own. Now, when you dwell on that level, you're dwelling, if I'm dwelling deep in me, I see deep in you. Yep. And other people hear you at the level you speak from. Mm. So if I am dwelling deep within myself, I, I, I don't chit-chat with you. I go deep, yep. and you go it's deep true. too, because that, that puts the energy there. That yep. It takes us both to that frequency where we're not trying to get. Yep. We're trying to give. Yep. Now, in when you look at the body, every cell is infused with a natural intelligence. Absolutely. And that intelligence leads it to collaborate with other cells to serve the healthy functioning of the whole, the organ and the organism of which it's part. Every once in a while, a cell goes insane. And the cell disconnects and, for whatever reason, doesn't think that it's here to collaborate with other cells to serve the healthy functioning of the pancreas or the liver or the lungs or the bones. Mm -hmm. It says, no, I want to go do my own thing. Yep. I want to go do my own thing and build my own kingdom. Yep. It's called cancer. Yep. It's cancer in the body. It is malignant in the body and it is malignant in consciousness. That's the problem with the world. Human consciousness has been infected with a malignant consciousness which says the highest good is that I get to do what I want. But you still have to acknowledge individual creativity and the ability to kind of go well, and Well, I don't think that the cell, individual no? cell isn't self-actualized. Interesting. Quite the opposite. The cell being healthy and vital is what enables it to collaborate. So, and you look here. Let's say our interview right now. Yep. You are collaborating with me. I'm collaborating with you. Absolutely. It is to your highest good, given that you are the bookstore owner. It is, and all that you own and do here, it is to my highest good and this way for me to express my work. And we are collaborating, so by you standing in your oh. highest good and my standing in my higher good, we are actually creating something Absolutely. bigger the, that hopefully serves others. 100%. The world is not a, a zero-sum game. And, and <laughs> you sure. hear, I don't know if you hear it here, but at home, you hear this all the time when people go into meetings. Okay, now, what's our intention for this meeting? Which I find appalling. Yeah. Because it has turned not open. It, it, it's transactional. Yeah. It's transactional rather than relational. Yep. So instead of instead of saying to go to be to be in a space of love and openness and possibility, it's what can I get from you? Sure. So programming my subconscious it's to awful. try to manipulate you and exploit you to get what I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. And too many people live in that. So in that plane. service is natural. Yeah. When you are in the Course in Miracles, says the closer you grow to God the closer you grow to your natural ability to protect your brothers. When my daughter was like four years old, well, there were these three little girls. Actually, it was Ariana Tuffington's little girls, interestingly enough. Hmm. My daughter, one of her daughters was born in May of 89. My daughter was born in May of 90, and the other one was May of 91. Maybe the Mays weren't right, but they were 89, 90, and 91. Mm -hmm. So they were playing a little child's board game. They were really young, like four, five, and six, or five, six, and seven, whatever. And Ariana's littlest one won. And I said, oh, it's about that's so good, that's so great. So you get to take India, my daughter, you get to take her little whatever, and they're yours now because you won. And there was this look of horror on her face mm -hmm. because she couldn't understand how her winning Takes away. Was it going to be take away things? Sure. She said, no, honey, you can have this. I said, no, honey, you won. So you get to have them mm. now. And her little face, she couldn't even comprehend how taking from India was her win. It was so beautiful to see that innocence that she had not been taught yet the thought system. She had not taken in yet the thought system yep. that her win would be at the expense of someone else's. I, thought, that is I never forgot That's that beautiful. story. And I'm not sure that you know, not all children have that. I, uh, I think that well, uh, maybe she, instinctively they do, but, they do when but, you were but born. very quickly they learn, it's, unfortunately, to try and just take and take and take, right? right? It's unbelievable so, what you see. I see some. Because knowing how to share and uh, love, it's so important. Uh, like, it, it, it's everything. Yes. It's not just so important. Yes. It's everything. I agree. I agree. It's interesting, actually, I mean, a, a little bit of a tangent here, but. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm a, a big board game uh, enthusiast, and uh, uh, there, there's been a renaissance of board games coming from, from Europe over the last 20 years, 
where unlike traditional games like Monopoly or Risk, where <coughs> you literally have to kind of like you know destroy your opponent to win, uh, they've created games that are they're still competitive, but they're they're called games of indirect. And the oh. idea is usually you have to reach a goal before someone else does in order to win the game. Wow. But you, and you're not necessarily taking away from someone right. else. It's just whoever you know passes the finish line. But meanwhile, everybody else can do well in the game as well. And 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 I and it's curiously enough, those games mostly come from Germany. And they say that a lot of that culturally might be because of the fact of you know they're kind changing the their culture way. and learning mm -hmm. the hard way and really changing. That so fascinating. I mean, Settlers of Catan is, is is considered the most popular uh -huh. one at, uh -huh. at this point, but I, I find I find that Very really really fascinating. Well, it's the only way we'll survive as a species. Got to know how to got to know how to share and how to collaborate. And actually, all these games are based in collaboration. So and you that's trade what that cellular relationship is. It's collaboration. You see it in the body. We need to, but we've lost sight of it. We've taken rugged individualism too far. By the way, you mentioned uh, here that in A Course in Miracles. It's our job to tell someone they're right, even when they're wrong, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we're supposed to lie. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it, 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 we just have to find a way to affirm their humanity while still kind of giving them you know, our point of view. That's How? been a very difficult one for me. People <laughs> yes. would say to me, oh, Mary Ann, you were so harsh when you said that. And I said, I, would, I wasn't harsh. I, it, was just, it was the truth. It was just I was being blunt. Mm -hmm. And somebody once said to me, um, the line, I don't know who originally said this, but it's really brilliant, Compa um, honesty without compassion is brutality. Yes. And communication has the word commune inside it. Beautiful. So if I don't take responsibility for the heart space between me and another person, then I might say, well, I communicated. You didn't communicate. You actually spoke in a way that turned off, broke communication because it yeah. made the other person want to protect themselves. So that's, you know, you can affirm and show respect for someone um, and affirm your innocence. And, you know, it's like when people say nonviolent communication, um, you don't say, you made me feel. You say, <laughs> yeah. you know, when I that feel. happened, I felt. Yeah. Um, I always say the Holy Spirit works on your style. It's not just what we say, it's the energy with which we say it. And as I said before, the Course in Miracles says, people hear you on the level you speak from. And I've, I've had some real sad things in my life where I felt people, where I know people took offense when that was the last, uh, last thing I intended. Sure. And so that's, that's working on that muscle is ex extremely I understand important. you've got, uh, uh, from tears to triumph, uh, you've got a, a new title coming I out. Do. Soon, okay. and I'd love to kind of hear w w what it's Thank about. Thank you. It's called Tears to Triumph The Spiritual Journey from Suffering to Enlightenment. Um, there has developed in our, our culture a way that to, we take this cheap yellow smiley face and we pour it on everything like happy face, and it has given us a distrust of unhappiness. And just as there are storms in nature and they serve a function, there are storms in the normal life. Sure. Um, people die, uh, divorce, heartbreak, uh, grief, uh, financial loss, financial ruin, um, recovery, finding out someone you love is, is addicted, losing your job. And these can lead to very dark nights of the soul. And what I think of as a psychotherapeutic pharmacological industrial complex has kind of appropriated the word depression that's for scary. its own purposes over the last few years. And woe to the person who dares question that. Um, many depressing periods in life are, or certainly can validly be deemed, and certainly are in my mind, spiritual crises. Mm -hmm. Now people say, well, you're not a doctor. Well, I would say to some of them, but you're not a, how can I look to your mindset to heal a crisis of the soul if you don't even acknowledge that the soul exists? Sure. So I think many of us are not so quick to enroll. Um, now, I, I, I certainly believe that there are, in cases such as schizophrenia and bipolar, um, there, uses, there's room for, uses of, for, for psychotherapeutic drugs yeah. can be, absolutely. But there is an epidemic of casual antidepressant use today. Yeah. Somebody, particularly young people, going through the normal processes of, of, of sadness, deep sadness, even depression, that are part of growing up, that are not mental disorders, right. that do not represent mental illness, and yet are told not only to take antidepressants, but to expect to remain on them for the rest of their lives. So this, 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 this is where it gets scary. So you're saying 
it's one thing to maybe take antidepressants, you know, if you if you're really depressed, but it's another thing to have a life sentence, uh, you know. Well, we're, it's we're, not we're, for me to say who should even take them at all. That's not the conversation because that drags us into how dare you. Okay. I'm just saying that it's not all depression is a mental illness. Right. I mean, people are so into um, no, this person has been diagnosed as clinically depressed. The diagnosis is based on a survey. Sure. The diagnosis is based on a on a questionnaire, and then and when you look at those questionnaires, you look at those surveys. It's a spectrum, and who among us wouldn't say, "Yes, I was that at one time." Sure. Everybody gets sad. Everybody <clears throat> right. has. Yeah. And so sometimes, sometimes. and people say, "Oh no, it's a chemical imbalance, chemical imbalance." But then when you really look into the, I mean, okay, even if it affects your chemistry, so does meditation. Right. Meditation affects your chemistry as well, and these days there's this quick. Um, you know, some people say, well, that's a stigma on mental illness. It does not stigmatize mental illness to say that, that certain periods of depression are not a mental illness and that we should not be patholo We're pathologizing everything today. We pathologize adolescents. We call everything a disorder. If I hear one more person say they have an anxiety disorder, this whole civilization is an anxiety <laughs> disorder. <laughs> that's this true. Un unfettered global capitalism is insane. Yeah. The way we treat the planet today is insane. Yep. The way we have created so, so they, I, I, that's another issue that I, I talk about in the book. You know, we now know that you can't talk about the the mental and emotional problems of a sure. <clears throat> adolescence outside the context of, of the entire the family system. Yeah. And I think now we need to know that you can't really talk about individual suffering well. outside the context of the sure. social and political structures sure. that we're above, all so living below. within. You know, whether you're living in Baghdad or, you know, if you see somebody beheaded on your computer, you're sitting in mm. Idaho, you're going to be depressed that day. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that the, the issue is for us to realize that there is a level on which over the last hundred years we have taken the issue of human suffering and so made it about the individual Interesting. that this has kept us from recognizing some of the larger social forces that are depressing all of us yep. and that then keeps us from changing those right. we things. We need to be able to engage them. Exactly. So I try to go into that and then what I talk about is I, t I go rather deeply into Buddha and Moses and Jesus talking about how suffering is at the core Buddha, until Buddha saw suffering for the first time, after Siddhartha left his father's compound, it is when he saw uh, age, suffering, and disease for the first time that he began his journey to enlightenment. His Four Noble Truths, the first one, is That's life right. is suffering. It is when Moses saw the suffering of the Israelites and then led them through a period very replete with suffering in the desert. And, of course, Jesus yeah. is suffering on the cross. Yeah. However, in all three cases, that's just the first half of the equation. Because the whole point is what comes after when God shows his hand, which is enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, deliverance of the promised land, and resurrection. Yep. But in all three stories, human suffering... It's an integral point. It's right there. Yeah. So some of these more you know, secular and psychotherapeutic and, and uh, uh, soulless and even pharmaceutical perspectives on these dark nights of the soul do not recognize the deep spiritual gold in all the great religious and spiritual systems because they all not only acknowledge suffering but have a deeper conversation about suffering, a, a, a deeper understanding that it gives us about suffering which then leads us to its not just its denial or to buffering ourselves from it but the genuine work of transcending it and overcoming. I love so that. I hope the book... I'm looking forward to, uh, to reading it. Thank you.